is the land I understand, and it's there I long to be. The stars at night are big and bright, deep in the heart of Texas. The prairie sky is wide and high, deep in the heart of Texas. The sage in bloom is like perfume, deep in the heart of Texas. Reminds me of the one I love, deep in the heart of Texas. The coyotes wave along the trail. Deep in the heart of Texas, the rabbits rush from brush to brush. Deep in the heart of Texas, the cowboys cry, Calliope! Deep in the heart of Texas, the doggies ball and ball and ball. Deep in the heart of Texas. That's Taylor's buckboard down there. He's the editor of the Independent. Looks like he needs a little help. Come on, let's find out what's wrong. Not me. Those are Mallory's men with him. What do you mean by Mallory's men? You'll find out. The further you can keep away from them, the better. But if you won't drive, I will. The road don't go down there. I'll make one. You get inside before this thing goes off. an order from the court accusing you of printing treasonable editorials. You know what that means. I certainly do, Sneed. And I'm not afraid. Tie him up. All right, get that rope up. What's going on here? You better stay out of this. We're carrying out a court order. Well, this is a strange way to carry it out. Take that rope off. I said stay out of it. Sir? Quite all right. Thanks to you, gentlemen. Here's your hat, mister. Thank you. 
Well, if it ain't old Brett Gordon, and still just as good a shot as ever. Well, happy you old rascal. What are you doing in this territory? I'm going into business at Freedom City. Expert on guns and how to handle them. That's me. <laughs> Say, what's this all about? I'm Jonathan Taylor, publisher of the Rio Grande Independent. My editorial policy seems to displease Colonel Mallory. And you mean this hanging party was the result? That's right. If you boys hadn't shown up when you did, I'd have never brought out another newspaper. Well, you're still not in the clear yet. You better ride back to town in the stagecoach. It might be safer. Happy now, I'll bring in the bugboard. That's a good idea. Thanks, partner. Say, you happy you remember the last oh, time? Oh, down it! We... Hey, wait a minute, boys! I got something here now. I want to get it. Yeah! All right. Okay, driver, go ahead. I'm gonna leave you at the edge of town, Happy. What are you up to this time? Last time we met, you was in a uniform. I'll tell you about it on the way. I may need your help. Well, I can handle any job you got for me. <laughs> Almost any job. Well, personally, I think the taxes are exceedingly lenient. What do the gentlemen of my cabinet think? Well, I agree with you, Colonel Mallory. And I'm sure Idaho does, too. Ain't high enough. Well, I presume you have good news to report, Sneed. No. Taylor escaped and one of my men got killed in the fight. You bungling idiot. Slow down, Mallory. It wasn't my fault. Some young fool got out of the stagecoach and started interfering. Another hombre rode up and fired into us. Being a very brave man, you took your heels, I suppose. Will you find these two strangers who had the stupidity to interfere with my commands and bring them here to me? What about Jonathan Taylor? The court order still holds for his hanging. Well, that matter can rest for a while. People are up in arms enough as it is. Idaho, go with him. in trouble, dear. Uh, Jim, this is my daughter, Nan. How do you do? I'm very pleased to meet you, ma'am. Uh, come inside, Jim. Jim helped me out of a bad spot, man. You mean I tried to. Fortunately, another chap came along just in time to do all the real fighting. Oh, you're too modest, son. If you boys hadn't come along when you did, Mallory's cutthroats would have me swinging from a tree limb. Colonel Mallory's nothing but a tyrant and a murderer. So your father's been telling me. But isn't it possible that Colonel Mallory is not to blame for the way the citizens of the Republic are being treated? Possibly, but not probable. Mallory set himself up as ruler by force of arms, and he isn't going to let anybody do too much talking or thinking and live. Where's your passenger? In the printing office. Come on. Guilt under arrest. Charged with interfering with the laws of the Republic and resisting an officer. Where's your warrant? Here it is. <laughs> Colonel Mallory has decided to withhold the court order against you, providing you stop attacking him in your newspaper. This is your last chance. Get outside. Idaho, 
Stay in town and keep your eye open for an umbre on a white horse. If he shows up, nab him. All right, get mounted on that black horse. Listen to a song of the rain. Listen to a song of the sagebrush calling to me again. Sing in a song of the Here on the desert drive We never search for a treasure We want nothing gold can We lose the cares of our age Sing in a song of the same You ain't gonna have your place shot up? Yeah. Just like that and relax. There's a piece of iron in back of that target, so don't worry. What if you can't hit it? What if I can't hit it? Ah! <laughs> I never miss. And now, my friends, for the greatest piece of shooting the like of you've never seen in all your born days. Just stand back and give me room. One, two, three, four, five. Let me have that chair, my friend. Thanks, Ah, uh, here we are. Get back that target! Don't get scared, boys. I ain't gonna hit nothing but that there target. Uh, I see. Oh, <laughs> that's got to go. <laughs> and now, just to make it a little more difficult, I'm gonna shoot upside down. Huh? <sighs> Here we go, boys. Watch closely. Anybody can shoot straight, but upside down. Here's a little bit. Here we go. Ah, <laughs> oh, boy. Say, how's that for shooting? You crazy galoot, you've wrought Lily. Lily? Must be some mistake. Something must have gone wrong. You blame right something must have gone wrong. That picture cost me $50, and you're going to pay for it. $50? I wish you'd have seen me first. I could have got it for you for $25. Say, I, I ain't got $50 on me. Uh, I got a date up the street. I'll keep it. Then you can work it out. What can you do? What can I do? Well, I used to be an entertainer on a medicine show before I started gun making. Say, partner. Can you sing love songs? Love songs? Well, that was my specialty. Well, Mike, you can work it out for me. Here's your 50. Thanks, thanks. Come on, sing, partner. Oh, Genevieve, I'd give the world to live 
begin the lovely past the rose of you was dew impelled but how it wilders in the blast Thought you might like to see him, sir. Hmm? Jim. Hello, Dad. Jim, my boy. I thought you were killed in action. Word came from General Sheridan's headquarters that you were missing. I was, but I'm very much alive now, thanks to a little Red Cross nurse down in the Southern Hospital. <laughs> I never thought I'd live to see the day I'd be grateful to a rebel. But I certainly owe her a debt of gratitude for sending my boy back to me. <laughs> Tell me, when did you leave the old ranch? Why, uh, just a few months ago. That'll be all, gentlemen. Sit down, Jim. We have a lot to talk over. You know, dear. to your homecoming, my boy. There's much to be done. Your military training will fit you for a high post in my cabinet. Dad, I listened to Abram Lincoln plead for a government made up of free people, not slaves. And I fought for nearly four years to help preserve his democratic principles. Then I come home. And I find that my own father set himself up as dictator whose rule is one of oppression and disregards for the rights of free-thinking people. Ideals are very fine, Jim. But you seem to forget Texas is an abandoned territory. Congress refused to take it back into the Union. Oh, I know, Dad, there's always two sides to every question. But the laws of a republic are made and enforced by representatives elected by the people. Who elected you? Why, <clears throat> why the holders of the original Texas land grants, because well, they needed protection. And, oh, but come now, Jim. Enough of this seriousness. You know, the post of Commissioner of Public Affairs in my cabinet is open and make me mighty happy if you would accept it. Then you see the problems of the people and the carrying out of all the laws. Well, it would be up to you. Thanks, Dad. I should have known the things I heard about you were wrong. Why, you couldn't do anything that wasn't right. Then you accept the appointment. With pleasure. Good, good. I'll post a notice summoning the Citizens Committee over to the High Sienda to meet you. There you are, Jim. I think I'll take this on down to the newspaper office. Anything you wish, my boy. Oh, I was about to send for you, Sneed. Yes? Yes, I've just placed my boy in the cabinet position vacated by Stevens. Do you think that's wise? As Commissioner of Public Affairs, he'll have the highest office in the territory next to yours. Well, that's as it should be. I'm building this republic now for him. Well, what about me? After all, we started this land grabbing scheme together. I don't intend to be left out in the cold. No, you won't be. There's enough for all of us. Remember this. I run this republic, and I'll give the orders. Well, perhaps I spoke a little hasty. What about this Sam Franklin property we meant to take over this week? Well, I'm having a meeting with the citizens' leaders to try and create a little harmony among the people, and that can wait. Why wait? Franklin will be here with the committee. Time will be perfect. I said, wait. All right. Mm -hmm. 
I wouldn't ring that bell if I were you, Colonel Mallory. To whom am I indebted for the pleasure of this unexpected visit? The governor. He wants to have a friendly little talk with you. You know, regarding your plans, your boundary lines, and your enforced taxation. The governor has nothing to do with how I run this republic. I am the law here, as you'll soon find out when you try to leave. Well, in that case, I'll have the law on my side. Because I'm taking you with me. Oh, you mean you're going to kidnap me from my own home? Well, you can call it what you like. Well, at least I admire your nerve. If not, you're better judge. Arrest him. Sing some more. Sing the cowboy's lament. The cowboy's lament? I don't know the song. Partner, you're lying. Sing the cowboy's lament. Uh, uh, j j just a minute. I'll, I'll find out the words. Say, boys, uh, do you know that song? Uh, 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 what you say it was? The cowboy's lament. The, the cowboy's lament? Uh, uh, say, tell me the words real fast. A man's life depends on it. Whose life? Mine. Oh. Well, I'll tell you how it goes. Streets of Laredo. I agree like this. As I walked out, the streets of Laredo. The drum scene. The drum scene. The drum scene. The drum What's the matter, Happy? You in trouble? Boy, am I glad to see you. You bet I'm in trouble. I'd have kept that appointment with you like I promised. Only this ordinary horn told you won't let me go till I sing that song, The Cowboy's Lament. And I don't know the song. Say, are you a friend of this shop shooting canary? Well, I... I reckon I am. Well, say, maybe you can help me remember the words of the song. Go something like this. Uh, uh, the drums are lowly, the fireplace. So, you know, do you know that? Yeah, I think I know the one you mean. Mm-hmm. That's it. <laughs> say, how about you warbling for us, partner? Yeah. Yeah, you do that. If you don't, he's allowed to keep me here all night. I accidentally plugged Lily. And he paid fifty dollars for it, and and I have to sing it out to him. Well, no wonder you didn't show up. Say, if I sing that song for you, will you call off half his debt? Oh, it sure will, stranger. Let's have it. Let's get her done, boy. All right. Here's the As I walked out in the streets of Laredo, as I walked out in Laredo one day, I spied a young cowboy wrapped up in white linen, wrapped up in white linen and a cold as the clay. His home's in Montana, he wears a bandana, his spurs are silver, his horse is a bay. He first got to drinking, then the card playing got shot in the breast and you see where he lay. So beat the drum slowly and play the pipe lowly and play the death march as you bear me along. Take me to Green Valley and throw the sod o'er me for I'm a young cowboy and I know I've done. Feels good to be out of debt again. Partner, that was wonderful, wonderful. Good afternoon. 
I'd like to put this notice in your paper. Come in. We're both concerned about you, young man. Thank you, sir. This is what I'd like to have printed. The Citizens Committee of the Republic of the Rio Grande are summoned to a meeting at Colonel Mallory's Hacienda on Thursday afternoon to be introduced to his son, Jim Mallory, who has been appointed to the post of Commissioner of Public Affairs, signed Colonel Mallory. Hmm. His son. Do you know the son? Why, yes, I do. Quite well. As a matter of fact, I'm Jim Mallory. I refuse to publish this. I suppose I should have introduced myself sooner. No explanation is necessary. Well, we were just about ready to close the office. Do you mind? I'm sorry you feel that way. I know you'll change your minds before long. About my father, I mean. I'm sorry, Fred. I didn't mean to. Oh, that's all right, Happy. You'll be more help next time. Listen, Mallory's holding a citizens' committee meeting. I want you to be there and keep your eyes open. If you see any of his men leave on horses, let me know. I'll be at the Franklin Ranch. Well, I won't fail you this time. I was hoping you'd drop in. This is my daughter, Nan. Glad to know you, Miss Taylor. I'm Brent Gordon. How do you do, Mr. Gordon? We certainly owe you a debt of gratitude. Uh, Jim Mallory's the one to thank. Did he leave an announcement about the meeting? How did you know? I did a little investigating on my way to town. I'm from the governor's office, Mr. Taylor. He told me to look you up. You mean the state's finally going to take action against Mallory and his lawless element? Well, the state is powerless at this time. But we're going to take action. I want you to put me in touch with every rancher in this community who can be trusted. I know them all. And they're all willing to fight for the last man when the right time comes. Well, the time is not far away. We'll begin by publishing this command performance of Colonel Mallory's. <laughs> Drink up. No, thank you. Oh, I want you all to meet my son, Jim, your new commissioner of public affairs. Jim, come down and meet the citizens committee. This is uh, Miss Nan Taylor. Her father, Jonathan Taylor. Good afternoon. Mr. Sam Franklin. Mr. Franklin. Clem Jones. Mr. Jones. Luke Norman. Henry McCall and Frank Smith. I'm mighty glad to know you. It's a real pleasure to see you again, Miss Taylor. Thank you. Stephen Pies, huh? I would test him. Partner, there's no angel can sing like you. How about singing any lawyer for me right here? I ain't gonna sing any lawyer for you here, anywhere, no time, never. Oh, you wouldn't treat an old pal that way now, would you? I can't, I do. I gotta go someplace. Listen, you're staying and singing any lawyer right now. Come on, boy, sound your age. Hey, 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 hey. I got some crumbs in my throat. Let me have a drink of water, will you? I know. 
I always did love that Annie Laurie. You, Brent. Matthews and his men just left Mallory's and they're coming here. Well, thank you, Happy. I'm glad you told me. Who's that? That's Matthews. Matthews? Is he dead? Oh, he, he's just taking a nap. Oh. oh. What's the matter? Is he tired? Uh, say, Happy, you better ride back before he comes to and sees you. I don't want him to know you're helping me. All right. See you in town later. Shorty. I deeply appreciate the things you've told me, and I can understand your reasons for complaining. I want you to know that I'll do everything I can to help you. It seems that my father's efforts in that direction have been greatly misunderstood. All right, get in there. Get in there. Hurry. I'm sorry to interrupt your party, Colonel, but the men you sent to grab off the Franklin Ranch after burning it ran into a little difficulty, brought them back for the law to take care of. What do you mean by such an accusation? Are you trying to stir up the people against me? It's about time they were stirred up against you, Mallory. Just a minute. Don't you think you're carrying this thing a little too far? Not as far as I intend to. I'm quite sure that Lieutenant Matthews can explain why he was at the Franklin Ranch. Sure I can. Me and my men stopped by to invite Franklin's men to the meeting. We knocked on the door. This hombre and his outlaws jumped us. What about the lighted torches you were carrying? I suppose you needed them to see your way about in the daytime. Why, the entire situation is absurd. Undoubtedly a frame-up. Uh, Captain Sneed, release the prisoners at once. Hold it, Sneed. Maybe you'd better introduce me, Mr. Taylor. Maybe the people here would like to know what I'm doing in this part of the country. For your information, gentlemen, this man is Brent Gordon, a special representative of the regional government. He was sent here to the Republic to offer all of us the privilege of making Texas once more part of the Union. In the next edition of the Rio Grande Independence, we'll be printed copies of the Oath of Allegiance. Every rancher will fill one out, and when Brent Gordon calls, sign it in his presence. You're crazy, Taylor, if you think you can get away with a speech of that kind here at my headquarters. It's treason, that's what it is, Colonel. Uh, Captain Sneed, you call the guard and close the gates to the courtyard. Just a moment. As Commissioner of Public Affairs, I believe I have something to say about how the laws of this Republic are carried out. Our guests came here peaceably, and they're going to leave the same way. Brent Gordon, you and your men are at liberty to go. And I give you my word that Lieutenant Matthews and his men will be given a fair trial, and if found guilty of the charges against them, will be sentenced accordingly. Thanks, Jim. I'm sorry we're on opposite sides of the fence. You go against my orders just once more, Sneed, and you're through. I told you to keep away from the Franklin Ranch until I felt the time was ripe to take it over. I know you did, Mallory, but I thought the meeting was a good time. Well, I'll do the thinking. Untie them, Judge. Yes. Those men are under arrest. I gave my word, and I intend to keep it. Nonsense. Gordon and Taylor are a couple of troublemakers. They must be eliminated. Starting today, the Rio Grande Independent is out of business, Sneed. I understand. 
Taylor couldn't get off a paper if his printing press wouldn't work, could he? If that's the way you're going to run things, I don't want any part of it. Oh, Jim, Jim, you haven't been back home long enough to realize what's behind all this trouble. Well, I've been back here long enough to realize that this republic that you set up is nothing but a one-man show. America is a free country. And if the people of this territory want to rejoin the Union, it's up to them. Well, what the people want and what I want are two different things. You don't suppose I built up this republic to hand it over to the regional governor or a silver platter, do you? But no. Oh, Jim. Jim. No, no, we mustn't quarrel. We must never quarrel. Everything I'm doing is for you. Well, if that's the case, why don't you give me a chance to run things for a while? If we gain the confidence of the people, they'll work with us, not against no. us. The citizens of the Rio Grande would never believe either one of us now. If they continue fighting me, I'll smash every one of them. Well, I guess there's nothing more that I can say. But I'm not going to stay here and help you make slaves out of free Americans. I'm going to fight to put Texas back into the Union. Get your press and equipment out of town and hide it. Sneed and his men are on their way here to wreck it. Why should we believe anything you say? Uh, don't stop to argue. Do as I say before it's too late. You better do as Jim says. If I'm going to judge a man, he ain't joking. Come on, let's start loading up. If this is another of your father's tricks, you'll regret it. All Mallory's aren't alike, Mr. Taylor. All right. You two watch the back. Over there? All right, Matthew, smash everything you can find. This is my property, and you have no right. Shut up and get over against the wall. Drop that gun. Put down that bar, Matthews, and raise your hands. Jimmy's loading the buckboard and get out of town. But you can't stay here after this. They'll kill you. Don't mind me. Hurry. Jim! Hey! Pick up that bar and bust it up. I want the law to make it treason for any citizen of this territory who swears allegiance to the United States. Yes, that's a very good law, Colonel. I'll put it in legal form at once and have the other cabinet members sign it. Better put in that as a death penalty for any hombre to have a copy of uh, the oath in his possession. Hope your report is good this time, Sneed. Taylor's printing press is completely wrecked. Unfortunately, though, Matthews was killed in the fight. Why bother me with minor details? Because the man who committed the crime was your son. Well, I'm quite sure if Jim pulled his gun, it was in self-defense. On the contrary, it was deliberate murder. My men were in the newspaper office obeying your commands when your son entered. He ordered us to leave, and when Matthews argued with him, he shot him. Where is Jim now? In jail. Who ordered his arrest? I did. Release him at once. He's charged with killing an officer of the Republic. Why should he be treated any differently than anyone else? According to your own laws, he must stand trial. That's right, Colonel. I said release him. I know the law. I make the laws, and I can break them if I want to. That's impossible. He'll get the same fair trial as any other citizen. Fair trial. You know as well as I do that Judge Peabody's court is nothing but a farce. I resent that, Mallory. Shut up. Bring my boy to me, Idaho. Me? I'm taking orders from Sneed. Oh. Slight case of mutiny, eh? Well, I'll stop that.
Captain Sneed, I demand your resignation. This is one time that you're not going to have your own way, Colonel. You're the one that's resigning, and your son stays in jail. I'll release him myself, and then I'll deal with you. Everybody, it's up to you to find a legal way to force Mallory out of office. I'm taking over, and I want it to look as though I'm a champion of the people. If Peabody can't figure it out, I can. Yes? How would your intelligent mind handle the problem? With this? That might be quicker, Idaho. Hello, Jim. Hello, Dad. Sorry, right, sir. No one's allowed in here. Stand aside. I'm Colonel Mallory. I'm here to see my son. You can't see him without an order. I give the orders. Colonel Mallory. I don't care who you are. Don't worry, son. I won't let you down. See you again, Mr. Taylor. They smashed my printing press and all the equipment, too. It was Colonel Mallory's orders. <coughs> all right, Colonel Mallory, this way. Well, what's the great man doing here so far away from the protection of his own men? I followed Taylor. I've got to talk to you, Gordon. It's about what happened at the newspaper office. Yes, I've heard all about that. Well, then you know about Jim. You know they arrested Jim for killing Matthews. But he was only trying to protect Taylor and his daughter and keep the printing press from being ruined. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do, even though I'd like to. You've got to help me save him, God. I, I admit it, it's all my fault. But he, he's my son. And this republic and everything that I've built isn't worth the life of my son. I'll make your proposition, Mallory. I'll do everything I can to help Jim if you'll agree to dissolve the republic. You have my promise. Good. I head back to Freedom City. Call a special meeting of your cabinet for tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Keep all the members inside your hacienda. Regardless of what happens, stall for time. Think of anything you can to detain them. Leave the rest to us. Thank you, Gordon. Saddle up, you fighting sons of guns. Round up all the ranchers who can be trusted and bring them here. Tomorrow's the showdown. Oh, happy. Yeah. Uh, where is your gun repairing outfit? One. Right here in the buckboard. I'll get it. What's the matter? Something wrong with your gun? No, no, no. But you're really going into business now. I am? You ain't fooling. No, you'll do the fooling. Oh. I'm putting a hair trigger on these guns so you can shoot quicker than Green's lightning. on the eyes. Oh, my eyes are killing me. Look at them. 
I think. I better go out in the daylight so I can see something. I can't see a thing in here. Give me my gun. When it ain't finished. I don't care about it anyway. Oh. Now, wait a minute, friend. You almost got your hand cut up off, off at the wrist. I gotta go across the street, boys. I'll be over there. Don't worry. Hey. It's a sharp shooting songbird. Hey, he must be awful sick. Oh, I got the, I got the ah! Did you fix the guns, Happy? Yeah. And the ones I didn't fix, I got in my suitcase. Good. Thanks, Brant. Why are you doing this for me? I wanted to get you out of here before Taylor and the Rangers take over the town. Take over the town? That's right. They're going to attack as soon as Happy signals with the fire bell. What about my father? Where is he? At the Hacienda. He's coming around our way of thinking. Good. I won't forget. Hey, Jim. Let me load these guns. Good. Some of the townspeople are going to give us a hand when the trouble starts. Glad to see you. I've been looking all over for you. How about singing a little song for me now? Some other time, Idaho. I'm busy. Oh, you ain't too busy to sing for me, are you? It's too early in the day. I got morning hoarseness. Off a horse or on a horse, you sing just like an angel. Come on, partner. Give us a song. I can't. It's awful. Listen. Oh, you're next muscle bound. I'll loosen it up for you. Hey, wait a minute. No! I suppose something's gone wrong, Franklin? I hope not. No! <laughs> I wonder why Happy doesn't ring the fire bell. There, yeah, that ought to make it better. Uh, it's worse. Well, I'll loosen it up again. No, 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 I don't. I'll sing. I'll sing the bell song from down went McGinty to the bottom of the sea. Oh, I know, sailor. That sounds kind of wet to me. Yeah, I know. It's all wet, but you'll like it. I'll tell you. You can accompany me on the bell. Oh, we're playing a duet? Yeah. Well, why didn't you say so? When do we ring the bell? Oh, you ring the bell when I say, ring the bell for poor McGinty. Ring the bell now! What you went and done. Why, Happy, you tricked me. <laughs> you ain't the only one I tricked. Now, now Idaho, you don't know what you're doing. Now, why, you tricked me, Happy. Idaho, think what you're doing. That's no way to treat a fellow. Uh, 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 Oh, 
of the Rio Grande and declaring it part of the state of Texas. Sit down, gentlemen. All of you, place your hands on the top of the tables. You may dissolve this republic, Mallory, but you'll never live to see it rejoin the Union. my last cabinet meeting. Dad. I kept my word, Gordon. I dissolved the Republic. Jim. That, that speech of Abe Lincoln's been on my mind. I... 
I'd like to take the oath of allegiance to the United States of America. Would it be asking too much? Go ahead, Jim. I pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Of the United States of America. The United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. To the republic for which it stands. Jim. Jim.